Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will be showing you how easy it is to design this baby shower themed chip bag in Photoshop. I have added a link to my template in the description below if you would like to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. Safari themed baby shower chip bag. This is a pretty easy design, but it is super cute and you can change it up any kind of way that you want. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how easy it is to design in Photoshop because I know how intimidating it can be. So the first thing that you're going to want to do if you're going to follow along with me is to open up our chip bag template, which again is below in the description if you would like to download it or if you have your own template, that's perfectly fine. So if you were to open up our template, this is what it would look like. I did add in some extras that um, I use every day, but you can more than welcome to switch it up any kind of way that you want. If you wanted to delete the words over here and change it to something else, that's perfectly fine. And it's the same thing with the nutrition facts here. Um, yours probably did not come with my um, website information here. You can put whatever you want over here. Like, I like to make sure that my information is available to my customers and their guests so that in case they want to come back and order more. Um, but you can, if it is there on the template, which I don't believe it is, um, you're more than welcome to just delete that and put your own information. So I have already downloaded all of the clip art and digital paper that I'm going to be using um, for this tutorial today just to make things a little bit faster. Um, but I did link down below the the information where I did download everything. Most of my clip art, digital paper, and fonts come from Creative Fabrica. It is one of my absolute favorite sites as I am able to pay a monthly subscription and then just download whatever I want off the site. It's most definitely worth the subscription fee. So what I'm going to go ahead and do first is I'm going to go ahead and do my background first. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my finder. I am on a Mac. Um, if you're in a window, it's similar to the same things. I'll try to remember during the video to if there's any different keys that I'm using um, that is specifically for Mac. And I'll definitely let you know um, so that it'll be easier for you for our Windows um, people. Alright, so we're going to first do the digital paper, which is our background. And I'm going to go with this one. I think this one works best of what I'm wanting to do. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that over this. All you have to do is drop it into Photoshop. There's nothing special that you need to do. I do want to let you guys know that my computer has been acting very crazy lately. So if it's a little bit slow acting, um, that's the problem. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, once it comes over into Photoshop, it has a box around it and you're able to expand that box like so. You can just go over to the sides and it expands it. So I expanded the full length of my bag. So now I'm just going to drag it down some just to get it how I want it. Because I kind of want like a ombre look. So I want the top to be white. So I'm going to put out some more. And I think that's, let me see, let's go a little bit more. All right, so that covered up. Now, if, for instance, if you brought this over and it was not um, behind, in front of the right and the left flaps, then you need to go ahead and move it over in your layers. Mine came in right above it, so I'm good. It's still behind all the other images, so we're good. Um, and from here, I'm going to go ahead and lock this background because I don't, I don't need to, oh no, I don't want it to move anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock it using my lock panel over here. Now, as you can see, there are some things I will not be going over in Photoshop. Um, as I do have a basics course that will show you the very basics of Photoshop. But I promise you, probably if 
looking at my videos, you'll see that some things is just pretty easy. Um, and you see like with my windows that I have open, tabs that I have open, things like that. But you're more than welcome to ask questions down below in the comments. Um, oh, another thing that once that you see that you have, you know, press enter and then you have locked into place your background or whatever, the box usually goes away. Again, some things is going on with my computer. I, I don't know. So don't stress out if you don't see this box here. That means your computer is acting right, whereas mine is acting crazy. All right, so moving on. So now that we have our background, so now I want to put my borders, which I chose to do a gold border, and I wanted glitter. So I did not open those yet. So we're going to go over here to where I store my digital paper, and we're going to find my glitter paper. As you can see, I have a hundreds of folders um, full of digital paper. It's the same thing for my clip art and I've just kind of like, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, collected them over the years. Um, but Creative Fabrica makes it so much funner because I can just download everything. Alright, so I found the glitter that I'm going to work with. I like this gold here. So I'm just going to drag it over into Photoshop. I'm just going to wait till it's there. So again, that box came up. And so I'm just going to move this up here and I'm going to resize it. Now, if you're wanting to resize something, um, like say just one size, one side versus the entire image, then when you go to um, change the size, like with the boxes around it, you would press shift. And that's on both a computer and a Mac. And then you would um, take the side that you want and change it that way. See how it it stretched versus the, the whole entire image stretching? So that's that. I do not recommend that if you do not have to, just because you can distort the image and it'll look really stretched out. So be careful with that. So I'm just going to do it all in one swoop. And... to set this so that it's at the, the very top and then at the very bottom. Um, if you're using my templates um, that you can download the link below in the description and also my website, um, it will have the guidelines in place. So I want the glitter up here and I also want it down here. The easiest way to do that is to just click on here and I'm just going to duplicate that image. So how you do that is for if you're on a Mac, you would press Control and J as in Juliet, or if you're on Windows, I'm sorry, uh, for Mac, you would press Command and J. For Windows, it's Control and J. So once you have made that extra um, image, if you look over here to your layers panel, you should see where it has, I'm now duplicated that layer for this one that says copy. I'm just going to click on it and I'm just going to drag it down because I want it to be exactly the same. And I'm going to put it right there. So now I'm going to lock both of these layers because I no longer need them to be moving anywhere. All right, so we're good there. So now I'm going to bring in my flower that I want to be here and at the bottom, as we have seen in the beginning of the video. So as I said, I already have those. Well, I thought I did. I didn't. So let's go ahead and find that. No problem. Um, so wherever you hold on to your, um, your clip art, that's where you'll go and get your stuff if you have not already downloaded it. All right, so now that that's open, let me go ahead over here to my clip art and I'm going to find my flowers. So let's see here. Okay. So here's my flowers I've collected over the years and I... Kind of, oh, you know what? This is not the one I'm looking for. I want a tropical one. Those are just regular flowers, and they do have a folder that's specifically for, like, tropical-type things, like um, leaves and, and different type of tropical flowers. After a while, I just feel like all of them um, probably needs to be combined, but we'll get there one day. 
So I love this flower right here. Um, I've used it mostly um, before for a Moana theme, but I think that it would be perfect for here uh, for a safari theme and us adding in some pink into this um, chip bag. So I just went ahead like I've been doing before and I just brought it over to Photoshop. So at this point it's at its original size that the person who designed the clip art um, had originally wanted it at. So it's too big for my chip bag how I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and resize it. Since the box is already there, the transform box, I don't have to do anything other than just make it the size that I want. So let's go probably like that. I think that's cool. So I'm just going to press enter to set it there. Now instead of stretching it out all the way over, I'm just going to um, duplicate it a few times to give it a more fuller look and then I didn't have to stretch it because it's just going to go all the way across. So to do that again, you're just going to press control or command and the letter J. And I'm going to press it a few times because I want a few of those. So and as you can see over there in your layers, it did duplicate. So duplicate. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to move them over like this. That's it. And we're going to move these in just a moment underneath the gold. Just give me a second. Okay, so that was the last one. So what I want to do now, because there's, what's what, we did five copies. I don't want to accidentally, um, to have to constantly find which one I want to move if I need to move any of them. I'm going to merge all of these together so that it will become one layer and it'll be easier to play around with. So there's a few ways that you can, well, there's two ways that you can do that. You can, um, you know, go up here, click on the background and then just drag down and you'll see those um, lines. If that's the case, then you can go ahead and release it. I would make sure that nothing else is selected over here on your layers panel, like the word Words. Um, the gold shouldn't be because we locked that so it's not going to take that so you can do that and once you know that the exact things that you want are selected you can go over head over to your layers and press your right um, click the right mouse button <laughs> um, and then you can merge layers and now when I go to when I go to move it around is now just one element okay so you can do it that way or and I'm gonna go back here using my history panel to unmerge it um, and uh, the other way that you can do it is that you can just use control or command and select all of them on the layer and you can right click on your mouse and then merge layers you can do it that way as well all right so now that that is merged I want to move it behind my glitter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my layers panel and as you can see over here, my layers panel, the one above it, if you're able to see the little thumbnail, this is the one that the, the glitter that's down here at the bottom, this is the glitter down here up here at the top. And as you can see, the flowers are right above the glitter at the top and you can see it for yourself on your canvas as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my merged flowers and I'm going to bring it underneath the glitter layer and so as you can see it went automatically um, behind it so then I went ahead and just clicked on my flowers and I brought it down a little bit just so it is underneath but it's, it's being able to be seen so now what I want to do now is I want to duplicate the the merged flowers just so that I can put them down here at the bottom so it's the exact same thing it looks the same so I made sure that my flowers are selected and I'm gonna press control or command um, J it made another layer and now I'm gonna bring it down here now I like this I don't think I'm gonna flip it but I can show you if you wanted them to look exactly the same because as you can see there's a different types of leaves on here um, if you want them to look exactly the same what you can do is is once you bring this down you can press control or command and T what that does is is it makes it to where you can transform them and do different things to that um, to that layer um, what happens is when you press control or command T you should get a box um, like you do when we bring things over into Photoshop. However, <laughs> again, my computer is acting crazy, so I had to click down on it for the box to come up. Now you can see that there's a, excuse me, a box. It's not over here again. It's just my computer 
it will not look like this on yours. Um, okay, so now that it's like that, like I said, if I wanted to make it look like this, I would just vertically flip it. So once you have that box around it, you can go ahead and right click on your mouse, scroll down, and then where you see flip vertical, you can just go ahead and flip it vertical, and there you have it to where they now are flipped the same way. But I kind of like it the way that it was, so I'm going to go back and flip it vertical. I'm going to press enter to set it, and I think that is cool. We'll go ahead and drag it down. Now, um, just a tip, if you're, say for instance, that your, your things, when you click on it, is not moving, make sure that the selection tool over on your left hand side is selected that is one of the main tools you'll be using um, the selection tool is one or the move tool you have in your erasers you'll be using that often and your typing tool these are the main tools I use every single day when I'm designing so that's just a tip again I do have a Photoshop course you're more than welcome to take that goes over all of these things as well all right, so I'm going to go over here where my website is, and I'm just going to change the color. I probably will mess around with that a little bit later. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to bring in my clip art. So the clip art is going to be the animals, and I decided I thought that a lion would be cute, as well as an elephant and a giraffe, and I think that's enough. I don't want to really cloud this design. Um, I just want to make it a little bit easier for you guys. I pressed control to get um, as many as I wanted at one time. So that's and it's the same thing. Use press control, press all the ones that you want, and then you're going to drag it over to Photoshop. Excuse me. Once you drag it over into Photoshop and you've selected more than one thing, so w one thing at a time will come up, and then you have to press enter or press the check mark up here. Um, to get it to set. So we have our lion first and I press enter. Then the elephant came in and then the giraffe came in as well. I press enter. So now what I want to do is I want all of these, I want to use these and make them smaller at the exact same time so to make sure that they're the same size and it's not looking kind of crazy. And before I do that, I want to go ahead and lock my layers for my flowers because I don't want those moving around um, when I try to grab these. Because they're so big right now, I'm gonna go ahead and use my layers panel um, and select all three of them at the same time by pressing Control or Command and then just selecting each layer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control again or Command and I'm going to press T as in Tango to get that box around them. That way since they're all selected at the same time, I'm now able to change the size of them at the same time. Okay. All right, so let's see how this size looks. I think maybe let's try just a little bit bigger, but of course we can always do different. And I just double clicked on my mouse, but to set everything after you have them control T, you can just always press enter um, or that check mark that was up there. Um, now, when you have everything selected at first and you're messing around with it, please remember that your layers panel is still gonna have those selected at once. So what I do is I usually just click somewhere on my canvas to make sure that those the is no longer highlighted and then that way I can just move each one at the same time at one time so let's see I think the lion should come first and then we'll have the giraffe in the middle and just here I'm just clicking on them and moving them how I want them okay I think I'm gonna have the elephant turned the other way. So how to do that is I selected the elephant. I made sure that it's highlighted here on my layers. And then I'm gonna press Control or Command and T. I have that transform box there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on my mouse and I'm going to flip horizontal and it turned it around. You can do that with just about any image. And now I'm gonna use my arrows on my keyboard and I'm just going to move them closer to each other like this super easy and I think we're gonna and we're gonna leave them alone for just a moment I don't think we're going to need anything else um, to play around with them but just in case we'll see so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some words and let's go from there so let's see here so the first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna go over to my tools and I'm gonna use my typing tool and there's different types of 
typing tools that you can use. For instance, if you click and hold it down, there's different things like you can do the vertical type tool, um, some masks, things like that. But for this chip bag, the only thing I need is the horizontal one. So all I did was I clicked right there because it's already selected. Then once you go back to your canvas, you'll see where you have um, this mark right here. Um, it looks like I don't really know how to describe what it looks like. It's a typing thing. Once it's there, you know that you're about to type. So then I click on my chip bag to get it prepared to type. And something come out like this black box here, I think it's because my letters were black, I'm not sure. Um, but it should come up with some words already there. You just type over that. So what I want to type now is I want to type welcome. And so usually what happens is it uses the last font that you used in the last color. So I just went ahead and changed it um, to welcome. To, to move it around, I went back to my selection tool. And as you can see, I went over here to my swatches um, to change my colors. Now, if you're new to Photoshop, you may not have this many colors. Um, over time, I've changed it. Um, I've changed like up here I have some of my brand colors I don't have all of my colors here um, also some fall colors that I'm working with a lot and they, these are ones I think that came with um, Photoshop but over time you can play around with that and add as many um, <clears throat> colors as you would like that works for you and your brand um, okay so now that I have that there and I changed it to black I don't know if I'm gonna change it later but for right now we're just doing with black I'm also not a fan of this font, so let's make some changes there. So I'm going to go over here to my character window. Now, keep in mind, now, if you do not have these things open already, you can go up here to the top and go to a window, and you can choose what windows you want open. Um, these are the windows here that I keep open mostly all the time, um, especially the characters, the glyphs. My history is the most important window for me. The, window, the reason behind that is because... I make mistakes all the time I'm able to go back in my history and just go ahead and go up one or whatever I need to do to fix that mistake so my history and also my layers is the other most important window that I have open um, is it's always good to just see what I'm working with and I can move things around easiest with my layers panel so you're more than welcome to keep the ones open that you know I have open like I said this is what mine looks like every single day um, they stay open even when I close Photoshop and I open it back up it looks exactly back like this Alright, so now that I have welcome selected and I want to change the font, I will go over here to my character window and first I'm going to make it a little bit larger just so I'm able to see it better depending on the type of font that I use. So, and that can of course change. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit just so I can have it isolated. Now I'm going to go up here to where, so in your characters, if you see a name right here, that is usually the name of the font. So, um, like my clip art and my digital art, I have thousands of fonts, which sounds great at the very beginning because it's, Cool, right? But then after you have so many, it's kind of exhausting. So I have my favorites that I use often. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose something from in my favorites category. Um, and if you decide that you have some fonts that you download that you do want to add to your favorites, you can just come over here, you select the star, and then, and then once you go into the star area, um, those fonts will be there. All right, so I want to find something just pretty simple. I don't need anything special just for the word welcome. I think Futuro works just fine. Probably said that completely wrong. It's okay. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit more, and then I'm just going to put it right there. We may end up changing the color, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So now I want to say welcome, and we're going to say baby Olivia. So I'm going to go back over here to my type tool. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to click on my canvas. And so as you can see, you couldn't see it earlier, but I don't know what Laurel, lorem ipsum means. <laughs> but that's usually what comes up when you're typing, and like I said, you just type over it. So I'm going to type out baby, oh, I'm in caps, baby Olivia. All right, so I definitely want something cute for her name. So let's go ahead and make it larger. So you can use this over here to make your fonts to a larger um, point, or you can also click in here, because it only goes to 72. You can put it to where if you want like 
uh, hunger. Let's see what hunger looks like. You can type that in that way. Or what you can do is once you have it selected, you can go and press Command or Control and T. We have our transform box that comes up there. Once that comes there, then you can just resize it that way to whatever size that you want. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it kind of small because I do want a script font for her name. So let's leave it small for right now and then we'll change it in a few. So I'm gonna go to my favorites and let's find the font that we like for this. So one of my favorite fonts is definitely Boom and Pharaoh. It's one of my favorite, but I'm not a fan of it for this. Now this font I think is pretty cute and use this font onto her name. It's called Shariska, I believe. All right, so now that we have that, and you see it's kind of large, and so I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to use my transform box, so I'm going to use command or um, control, and I'm going to have the box there. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. Let's see here. How large we want it to I keep going too far. So let me change that a little bit. And since it is here, let's try 65. All right, that works for me. Okay, so now that we have that there, now I'm going to go and I'm playing around with it a little bit, just moving it, um, seeing how I like it. But so let's let's change the, um, the color of baby Olivia and welcome. So for welcome, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this white. So I'm just gonna select white. Right now we can barely see it, but we'll change that in just a moment. And for baby Olivia, I'm gonna select her. And for her color, I actually want the, it to be a lighter pink. And I really like the pink from the flowers. So what I want to do is I want you guys to get a good look at those flowers. So I'm going to bring my, I'm going to zoom into my screen a, little, screen a little bit. The easiest way to do this is using the shortcut on your keyboard. You can use the tools over here to your right, like this one, but I specifically like using my keyboard to, um, my keyboard to do that. So what you select is you select control or you select command, and then you're going to click on the plus or the minus sign on your keyboard. So I put the um, plus sign so that way it's zoomed in. And so you can see the detail of the flowers. And I really like right here, you know, right here, the lighter pink. So I want to use that. So this is one thing I definitely do like about Photoshop is I can take any picture, any color from any photo, and I can use that same color in something else. So how I do that once baby Olivia is selected, I'm going to go over here to my character area where it says color. I'm going to click on color. Another um, window opens up, which is the color picker. And when you come over here to your canvas, bringing your mouse over it, you have, you see that little picker that that is picking up any colors. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the light pink part and I'm going to click on it. And what it ended up doing is it changed the color here. And it also gave me the code for that color. And I can do it with any of the different colors. Now that I clicked on that one, I kind of like that color a lot better. So I'm going to stick with that one. All right. So once we have that, now we go back, we press okay and we're good there and it, that color has now been picked. So now I'm gonna go and control and command. I'm just gonna bring back my um, the size of the zoom so that I can see a lot better now. And now I'm going to add a border to both her name as well as welcome so we can see them a lot better and it's a lot cuter. So we're doing for welcome. For welcome, I want to add the border the same color as the pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to stroke Oh, I'm sorry, I went too fast. Let's go back. All right, to add a border or to add some other effects to your um, to your clip art or to your words or anything, once you go over here to your layers panel, you're gonna double click on whatever you wanna make those changes to. Once you press double click, this layer style window will pop up and you can make different changes. Um, for these styles, the favorites, the most favorites that I like to use is the bevel and emboss. I just, it just gives us um, a really 
really cute effect and we'll use that in just a second. Um, the stroke to give it an outline. Um, I also love to use the um, drop shadow and I use everything else on different occasions but those are the ones that I use almost daily. So right now for, to put the border around the words we're going to use a stroke um, and then you just you click on it and it should highlight if not just click on it again. Um, the last one I used was a white border so that came up um, the size was really small so change that up. And once you come down here to color you can click on the color and the color picker will come up again and what I want is that pink I can go over here and click it on her name where the pink is and it'll pull it up or because I've already used this color is now over into my swatches I can just um, click on that that way and as you can see it came up to be a pink border so I don't want it that large so let's kind of make it small and I think that's good. Let's see what it looks like with the bevel and emboss. Usually when it's small words, it don't really come out looking that well. So I, I think I'm not going to use that. But I will use a drop shadow. So I clicked on that. And now I'm going to let's play around with this. When it comes to the different types of styles, I highly recommend you just play around with it. It's nothing that you can't do anything wrong. So just play around with it. Um, learn it until you find out something that just works best for you. But I like that. It made welcome come stand out with the stroke and the shadow. So I think I'm going to leave that like it is. If not, I can come back and change it later. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And so we left that along. And now I'm going to go over here and select the Baby Olivia layer. And I want to add a white border here. And I think we're going to mess with the bevel and emboss. So remember, I just double click that layer to have this layer style window to come open. And I'm going to go up here to the bevel and emboss. Let's see how that looks. So that came out super cute. I, um, I'm not sure if you guys can really tell how different it changed. I'm going to take it off so you guys can get an idea. Is this that pink? But it gave it like this like <laughs> so I like that so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that but I can also if I wanted to make some changes make it smaller softer things like that I can do that by clicking on it um, now I'm gonna go down here to my stroke and let's see so this stroke again it took the last stroke that I did and it just saved it but I don't want pink um, so we're gonna go ahead and color change the color to white and I want to make it a little bit larger. So let's make it larger. And then from here, I definitely want to do a shadow. So let's see how the shadow comes out. I don't want it too um, obvious, but not too small either. So I'm just going to play around with it. So I think that's fine. All right, so then that part, then we're good. Um, I mean, we have her name, we have welcome. There's not that much I want to do with this. So now I'm going to make some changes over here and here because this is a baby shower. I do have some different um, baby shower nutrition facts, but I'm not going to go over that here. If you have different nutrition facts, you can definitely use them. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. Um, and I'm going to delete this part here as well. So I'm going to keep this one because I think it's cute to leave here um, something to have on the back. But I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> use my selection tool, my type tool, I'm sorry. I'm going to change the words a little bit. For instance, I'm going to put, you know, thank you for sharing our special day just in case this is two parents. And then me, I'm just going to change to us. And I'm going to leave it like that And I'm other than changing the color of the words. Um, to change the color of the words, I'm just going to go over here since it's already selected and it is a type. It is a typing um, format. It will automatic, automatically change the colors, um, what I want it to be. So like I want it to be pink, so it automatically changed it. And it already has a white border around it. Let me move it around so you guys can see. Um, but since it's coming up here, the white is not so easily visible. So I do want to add maybe a shadow. I don't really want to change the color of the... Um, the, the border. Now here's a good thing I can go over with you guys. As you can see when I, I clicked on my drop shadow you can't see anything. Like you can see that the size is big, um, the spread is huge, um, but we can't see anything different and it's because the color is white and you can change your colors of your shadow any color you want. Usually I use black unless 
I'm using a black color and then I may change it to something else so that you can see the shadow. But usually black is the color that you use. So since this is white and I can't see it, what I'm going to do is click on that right there and if the color picker comes up, I'm just going to select the black. Now you can see where that shadow is so large we couldn't see it a second ago. So I'm going to press OK and I'm just going to make that change over there. So I'm going to change the size. We're going to go down almost all the way. The spread, we're going to bring that down almost all the way. And then the distance, we're going to bring that down as well. So I just want small, small. So I think that's perfect. We're just going to leave that like it is. We're going to press OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up because I can't really see my website. So I'm going to move that up. I'm going to nudge that a little bit with my arrow keys to move it down. And I'm just going to change the color to black. So that looks fine. Um, now I'm going to put something right here. And I think I'm just going to put a saying it's a girl. So I'm going to go over here to my type tool. And then I'm going to click in this space. And I'm just going to write out it's a and then girl with a question mark. Not a question mark, an explanation point. All right, so now I'm going to go over here to my select tool. And then I'm going to do control or command and T. And I'm going to have that box open up and then I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. So of course I don't really like this font very much. So I'm going to go over here to my character panel and I'm just going to change the color, not the color, but the font. And then we'll definitely change the color. So I think I want to go ahead and just keep it with the font that is um, for her name. So I'm going to take off the um, the start part and I'm just going to go over here and usually your recent, most recent fonts that you have used will come up. They will be at the top so you can just have easy access to them. So there's mine right there. So I'm going to make this smaller because of course it got larger due to it um, being the font that it is. And let's see where it's 67. Let's try 48. All right, so I think 48 is good, but then you have this huge space between the um, the words, and it's just because of the size of the font when it originally put out there, um, and it was a paragraph. It kind of it automatically accommodates itself, but right now we need to bring it back. So to make sure that it just always goes back to like a normal thing, you will, can go over here to your character panel and you see where it has the A over the A with the two arrows. That's telling you that that's what you would use to change the distance between the paragraphs or the words. Um, this is also one that you can use underneath it. This would mean that you, to, to change the distance between the letters um, of each word, this is what you would use here. Here where that VA is. But like I said, we're going to change the distance between the, the, word, the words itself. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click on it, and I'm just going to click on auto to see what that gave me. I like that, so I'm going to stick with this, but you can change it all kinds of different ways um, to see what works best for you. But I'm going to choose auto for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to white, and I'm going to put a pink stroke around it. We go there and I chose the stroke is still white, but I'm going to change it to pink. And let's see. All right, so. Hmm. Okay, I've changed my mind. That doesn't look right to me. I'm going to change the stroke to white, then I'm going to go back and change the. Um, the, the color to pink. Let me go back in here and do a drop shadow a little bit to give it a little bit more pop. Oh. All right, that works for me. I'm going to make sure that it's centered. Usually you get these pink lines um, depending on, on where you're moving your thing to, and it lets you know, well, okay, you're kind of, you're here, you're centered. Now there, you centered right across from the other side, or so forth and so on. Um, but other than that, that is it. So I'm going to select all of this here and I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. All right, I think that's good. All right, and not that part. <laughs> Go back down. All right, I think that's fine. All right, so that is it um, for us designing this chip bag. I hope you guys like it. Um, definitely give this video a thumbs up or comment down below if you do like this design or whatever changes that you think that we should have made. 
that's fine. So what we're going to go ahead now is we're going to save this and then we're going to make a mock-up. Um, if you follow me on any type of social media, you know how I absolutely love mock-ups. I use them on my website and on social media religiously. And the reason behind this is it just makes things so much easier so my customers can see the type of designs that I can do as well as me showing my customers their preview of their design. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, to do a, a mock-up of the mock-ups that I offer, again the, temp the, the link is down in the description of the video. You're more than welcome to use that. If you have your own mock-up in Photoshop, you can use that as well. But we're going to use mine for right now. All right, so what you're gonna wanna first do is save your file. Photoshop has updated recently, and I think that's why I'm having a lot of issues right now. Um, the Adobe Photoshop 2022 does not, it, you have to make a copy of your work in order to save it as a JPEG. Um, it's weird. <laughs> you used to be able to just go to save as and save as a JPEG. But now it is changed. So now you're always going to work to save a working copy of your work. This is very important because whenever someone orders something, you want to constantly have to remake it a whole entire design if you've already done it before. To save a working copy, you will go up to File. You will go as Save As. It automatically changes um, the format to a Photoshop format, which is your working format, and then you put it wherever you want in your on your computer. For me, I have my party products. Um, that means that those are all working files. Um, and I find my chip bag and I would give it its name and then I will put it there and then I will save it. I've already saved this, so I don't want to do anything with that. Now, you can also, now that you saved it this way, um, what I like to do is I like to save a copy of that same file, but I like to save it as a JPEG and I like to put it underneath my customers um, and my customers folder just so when they are ready for, um, when they have approved their design, I'm now able to just go ahead and print it out. Um, the template is already sized correctly, so for the chip bags, once you save it, um, as a JPEG from Photoshop or whatnot um, is already ready to be printed out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So like I said, I've already um, saved everything, so I'm not going to mess anymore with this. Um, but you would press save wherever you want it to go. Now from here, this may be a little bit tricky, but follow along with me. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to file and I'm going to open up my mock-up. So I'm going to and I'm going to double click it and I'm going to open it. This is what it usually comes as. Now, when you downloaded my mock-up, it may have a background there. Don't stress yourself out about that. You can delete the but not delete it, but you can um change the visibility of the background. I don't like to have my background there for obvious reasons because I don't need it. Um, but when you open it up, it'll look similar to this. You can, of course, move back your the, the canvas so you can see a little bit better. You can bring it up, whatever, whatever. So coming over here to your layers panel, um, you see where it says your design here. This is where you're going to put your design. So what you do from this when you first open up your mock-up is you double click over here in this little thumbnail. So you're gonna double click where it says your design here. And instead of opening up that styles panel that we had before for this mock-up, it opens up another window and it says rectangle. So what we're going to do now that we have this open, we're gonna go back over to our Safari bag and we're going to move this over here. Now, do not try to just move this one at a time. It's not worth it. It's too much work. So what you're going to do, make sure you have saved this file as a working file because it is very easy to mess up here and end up um, not being able to keep it as a working file. You have to do it over. So once you have saved this as a working file, what you're going to do now is you're going to go over here to layer. 
at the top. You're going to scroll all the way down to Merge Visible. Remember, we did this earlier, but we did Merge Layers for the flowers. Now we're going to Merge Visible, which means that everything that is in front of you on this canvas is going to merge together. So now that it did over that, it did lock that layer. Don't worry, just click on it. It will unlock the layer. We're going to make sure that our Move tool is selected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just click on our artwork. And as you can see, it moves as one. And we're going to drag this over to that rectangle. Once I let go, it's there now in front of us on the rectangle. So as you can see, the rectangle is way smaller than the chip bag, so let's make some changes there. What I like to do is to zoom out, so then that way I get the complete um, look of the chip bag and I can move it all at once. Um, so first what I like to do is I like to control or command T to get my transform box and then I press control or command and the minus button to go all the way out until I find the box and then I make it smaller and you go all the way in. So now that I have it smaller then I'm going to bring go it back up with zoom in with the control um, controller command and T I'm sorry and the plus sign. Alright so now for the chip bags, this is the front of the bag, okay? These are the back flaps. This part here, this part here. These are the back flaps, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is the front of the bag. So how to do that? Now, usually for the mock-ups, how I do them, how I design is I usually have a lot of things all over here. What ends up happening is the mock-up doesn't really, it recognizes it, but it's not going to fit onto the chip bag the same way. So usually I have to manipulate my image a little bit. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to need to. We may not have to do it at all on this one because I don't have a lot of things over here that I don't want to be seen on the chip bag, on the front of the bag. So let's just see how this comes out. So I completely fill it, fit the beginning, the front of the chip bag into the rectangle. I'm just going to press that or you can press enter. Usually the box goes away. Mine didn't. Whatever. All right. So now what we're going to do is you're going to go to file. Once you have the front of your bag in the rectangle, you go to file and you're going to press save. Do not do save as. Don't do anything other than save. Once you select save, now we're going to go over here to the chip bag mock-up. And as you can see, our chip bag is right there. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And this is a little bit too dark for me. Um, it's just the shadows of how we did the mock-up is why it looks so dark. But you can go over here to your um, layers panel and we can make some changes to that. So I'm going to click on the highlight um, layer and I'm going to go over here to the opacity. And I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. So that, that looks fine. Um, let's see if the shadows are already a little bit lighter to begin with. And I think we'll leave it like that. So now, as you can see, baby Olivia, her name, just for the, the sake of the mock-up, is kind of large. So I'm going to move in the image a little bit, and we'll save it again see what it looks like. So now I'm going to go back to my rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer. I'm going to select... Um, control or command and T. My box didn't come up. There you go. Sometimes I gotta manipulate a little bit. And what I'm going to do instead of just moving it all at once, I'm gonna press shift and I'm going to move in just the sides itself. Okay, so I'm gonna press shift and then see how the left side is coming in. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna do the same thing, just bring it over just a little bit. I'm going to press enter to set it and then let's press save again and let's see how it looks. So we're going to go over and go back to the chip bag. And so usually it came in a little bit. I think that's fine. Um, maybe let's do the left side again a little bit more because it kind of looks like that the animals are all centered um, and we don't want that. So let's go back. We're going to do the same thing with the control T. I have to mess around with my screen to get my box to come up. I'm just going to come in a little bit more and let's see if we nudge it a little bit. Let's see how that comes out. Make sure press enter or that check mark. Go back to file and press save and let's see how it came out. Okay, so now I feel like it's too far over to the right. So we're going to go back in and do the same thing to the right side. And I tell you this, this is usually how it is. Um, 
it's, it's a lot of nudging and moving and things like that sometimes when you're doing your mock-ups. Don't stress yourself out over it. All right, press save. We're going to go back. Let's see how it comes out. All right, I think that's fine. We're going to go ahead and leave it like this. Now, what I like to do, now you can do things a, a lot different of what works best for you. You can save this as a PNG file so you don't have a background, or you can save it as a JPEG. I personally have my own um type of background that I use for all of my images and is this something that I do for all of my images to where I don't have to constantly make a new background every time I save a design so, so I'm going to open that up so I'll go over here to file and I'm going to go to open I'm going to go over here to my mock-up backgrounds and I'm going to find my chip bag one whenever it decides to come up okay we got a chip bag mock-up and once I come up, you guys just understand what I was saying. So I'm just giving just one moment. <clears throat> okay, so this is the one that I had did before um, when I was deciding to do this video, and I just um, left it the same way. So I'm just gonna delete these, and I'm gonna show you how I bring them over. So what I do is now for the mock-up, you do not have to save a working file because this is just a mock-up. We're actually going to delete this. We're not going to save it because we don't want it to save with this image, okay? Because we're going to use it for something else. But I do want to merge it like we did before. We're going to merge visible. I'm then going to take my bag and bring it over here to my show bag mock-up. I'm then going to control or command a T and I'm going to make it larger like so. Okay, so I'm going to leave that like that. Now I'm going to go back over to my chip bag mock-up. In order for me to change so we can do the back of the chip bag, I have to unmerge everything. So I'm just going to use my history panel and I'm just going to go up one. The layers came back. We're good. I'm now going to go over to the rectangle part. There's no need for me to click on it again. It's already still open. The image is still there as well. So now to do the back of the chip bag, it's really easy. And there's nothing special you really need to do. So now that we've already done the front, what we're going to do is we're going to take this template and we're going to move it all the way over to the left to where the back flap is showing. Okay. So we have that. So now what we're going to do here is once we have that flap where we want it, I'm going to go over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, with the layer selector, we're going to press Command or Control J and we duplicate it, duplicate that copy. And then we're going to now move it back on over to the right where the other part of the chip bag is the words. And we'll, we'll bring that there. And so now we have the back flaps. Uh, you can have it to where it's closed, um, right? They're touching each other. I personally like to leave over that little white strip because when you look in the back of a chip bag, there's a white strip down the middle. So I like to leave it that way. That's up to you. Once you have it that way, then you go ahead and press file. You press save, and then you go back over to your mock-up to see how it looks. And let's see. And then there you go. So I like it the way that it is. I since we've already made the changes um, with the highlights and the shadows, I think that is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and select layer. I'm gonna merge visible again so I can move the bag over to my mock my chip bag mock-up um, display and bring that over. And then I'm just going to enlarge it, pressing control T or Command T. And I don't make this the same size. I make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to move it behind my logo. And then that's it. And I usually save this as a JPEG. And I save it to my computer. Um, and then that's it. So when you're exiting out of these, you go over to the rectangle from the, the, um, the mock-up. Just exit out of it. It won't ask you to save it. However, um, when you go to the chip bag mock-up, Make sure you unmerge it, but you can also just exit out and when it asks you whether or not you want to save this document, press don't save, okay? And it'll go right back to how we originally opened it. And that is it, you guys. This is how you design a chip bag in Photoshop. It is not hard. Um, <laughs> so don't stress yourself out about it. Feel free to ask me any type of questions down in the comment section. Um, I do not give out um, the, the 
the dimensions of my templates um, because they are able to be purchased with the exact size and the sizes are included in the template. But let me know what you guys think. Um, I think this is super cute and you can make any changes that you want to these. Um, please definitely follow, like, um, share this video with your friends who are interested in maybe starting their own party favorite business. Um, new videos will be released every single week um, and we'll be doing different types of designs as well as different types of favors. You all have a very blessed day. Don't forget if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thank you.